Hi everyone, today we're going to look at blood types and blood transfusion. Here we go. So blood types, there are four main blood types. There are many rare types too, but the four main blood types are our concern. So you have A, B, AB, and O. And this translates into A+, plus, A-, minus, B+, plus, B-, minus, AB+, plus, AB-, minus, O+, plus, and O-. Minus. Universal recipient, somebody who can get blood from any blood type, is AB+. Plus. And someone, your best friend ever, who can give blood to anybody, is O negative. Okay, so, picture a capillary. Remember, a capillary is a tiny little blood vessel. It is 1 50th of a hair thick, and it is one cell thick. It has pores. So this is a cross-section of a capillary. Red blood cells are here. We have one, two, three, four red blood cells. And blood typing is all about proteins. There are proteins in the plasma, which is the liquid around these red blood cells, and there are proteins on the membranes of the red blood cells themselves. These two proteins are called agglutinogens or agglutinins. If you are an agglutinogen, you are fixed on the membrane of the red blood cell. In this case, we have an A. We have A type of blood. So an agglutinogen is on the membrane and it also dictates the blood type you will have. So if you have A agglutinogen, your blood type A. If you have A agglutinogens and the RH, you would be A+. Plus. Okay? The agglutinins, on the other hand, are protein and blood plasma. They're proteins that are floating in the plasma of the blood along with the water. They become activated if you give the wrong type of blood to someone. Okay? So let's look at these proteins in a little bit more detail. Alright, so so far I've thrown a lot of information at you and you're probably already a little overwhelmed. So feel free to pause this video, backtrack and look at the beginning again. Okay? So these two proteins now in a bit more detail. Remember they're called agglutinogens and agglutinins. Agglutinogens black here. These are the ones that are fixed on the membranes of red blood cells. You're not better because you're an A plus blood type or a B plus blood type. That has nothing to do with your health. It's just something you have or you don't have, like you have brown hair or you have blonde hair. Okay, so agglutinogens, you can picture little dots on the membrane of the red blood cell and there are two types, but actually there are three types. Let me tell you why. You can have blood type A, so you can have agglutinogen A, you can have agglutinogen B, or you can have the RH factor. If you have the RH fa factor, you are positive. Your blood will be positive. If you don't have the RH factor, your blood will be negative. The RH factor is called RH in honor of the rhesus monkey, which is the cute little, cutest little monkey. It has this factor too, because primates share factors in their blood and in their DNA and their makeup with us. And so, in honor of this monkey, we've called it the RH factor. So, if you have the A and the RH factor, you are blood type A+. If you only have the A, you would be A negative. Okay? So, this is an example here. Let's say you are blood type A, B minus. You would have, this represents a red blood cell. You would have agglutinogen A and agglutinogen B. Now, these agglutinogens are all around your membranes. But this is just to symbolize, to simplify. In your blood, flowing in your blood is the opposite protein in the agglutinin form, so anti-RH. Let's, let's look at another example. Let's say you are blood type O+. On the membrane of your red blood cells, you have RH only. Then in your blood, you have anti-A and anti-B, and these two are agglutinins. Whenever you see anti-something, it means the agglutinin, and that's in the plasma of the blood. All right? Let's move on a little bit. Now, a little bit more about agglutinins. Remember, they're the ones that are in the liquid portion of your blood in the plasma. There are three types. Anti-A, anti-B, and anti-RH. These are also called blood antibodies. And these faces are there because if you give the wrong blood type to somebody, you can actually kill them. So when you do a blood transfusion, it's very important to give the right type of blood. Now, if you do not have an agglutinogen in your blood, you always have the anti-version of it, as you've seen here. So feel free once again to pause this, 
and to go over this again. If this is too fast for you, okay? I need to talk to you now about agglutination. Agglutination is very serious. It's a process by which you give somebody a wrong blood type. So the blood types are not compatible. And when this happens, you'll get clumping in the blood. For instance, if I give A plus to B plus, B plus in its blood has the anti-A. The anti-A will clump to the A of this blood. In other words, you get all these little clumps in the blood. These clumps will add up in the capillaries and eventually you'll get internal hemorrhaging, which is not good. So back in the day, before we knew anything about microscopy, we used to do blood transfusions. It was plain Russian roulette. Sometimes people would be fine and they'd get better and other times people would just start convulsing and they would die. It was awful, but that's what we did. Okay, so agglutination, okay? A little bit more detail on that. There is a rule, and there is a rule to follow. And so when you give blood to something, so to someone, the rule is you cannot give to someone something they don't already have. So if I say that in, in more technical terms, you can't give to someone an agglutinogen they don't already have. And I'll show you how. A plus gives to B plus, back to that example. Remember, in a drop of A plus, you would have A and RH on the red blood cells. B plus has B and RH on its red blood cells. So the RH is not a problem. A plus has RH, B plus has RH, that is not the problem. The problem is the A. When you give an A blood type to B, the B blood type has the anti-A. Now, when you mix these two together, the A's from this blood type and the anti-B from this one will clump together and form clumps. And as you can think, clumps don't flow very well in your blood at all, okay? So, if you can picture a big, big, big drop of blood with these two types together, you see that the A from this blood type clumps with the anti-A from this one. This leads, of course, to hemorrhaging because these big clumps would pack up into the small capillaries and you know they're only one cell thick, they're not very resistant, they would start opening up and then you have massive internal hemorrhaging. So rule of thumb, you cannot give to someone something they don't already have. You can't give to someone an agglutinogen they don't already have. Example, A minus to AB minus, yeah. AB minus to A minus, uh-uh. AB minus doesn't have the B, right? It would have the anti-B. Not a good day. All right, let's keep okay. going. Now it's time for examples. A few examples for you to help you understand a little bit better. First thing, possible or not. So the first thing you have to understand is what, what I mean by these arrows here. I have blood type A negative giving to AB plus. Do you think that works or not? Maybe you can pause the video right here before I go on and see what you think. So, if I make pictures of this blood, so I can understand them better and visualize them better, I have a little red blood cell with an A, that's AB minus, I have AB plus with the A, the B, and the RH, and I can clearly see that I'm giving this blood type A, and it already has the A, so it's all good. Do you think I could reverse this? Do you think I could do AB plus to A? Actually, I can't. The reason why is that AB minus would have in its plasma anti-B and anti-RH. Double whammy. Not good. Okay? Let's go to B now. Can you give B plus to AB minus? So you're giving a B blood type to AB. Okay, so you're giving a B to an AB. It already has the B, right? So it sounds good, but careful. You're giving a plus to a minus blood type. You can't do that. You can never give a plus to a minus. Because if you do that, remember, AB minus would have the anti-RH in its plasma. Clumping would happen, and that's agglutination. All right? Number two, can give to. Who do you think AB plus can give to? Once again, you can pause the video and try this on your own before you see my answer. O plus can give to all positive blood types. Because O only has the RH on it, this is the picture, it can give to any positive blood types. 
because it's giving RH to AB+, plus, which has the RH, so does B+, plus, so does AB+, plus, so does O+. Plus. So that's good. This is check. All right. Number three, can receive from O+, plus, can receive from whom? Once again, you can pause the video and see if you can get the answer on your own. Now, AB+, plus can always receive from itself. You can always give to yourself or receive your own blood type. That's a given. It can also receive from O minus. So the answer to this one is <laughs> O positive can receive from O positive and O negative. Remember, O negative is the universal donor. He can give to anybody. All right, so this is your homework for next class. I'm truly expecting that you'll be able to do well on this because you've got the opportunity with this video to pause and look at things again and to truly get an understanding and a grasp as to how this works. First question, give one similarity and two differences between agglutinogens and agglutinins. Reproduce this table. Fill in where the question marks are. Number three, B negative can give to whom? Number four, AB negative can receive from whom? Five, O negative can give to whom? And six, O positive can receive from whom? Okay? Number seven, explain in detail how agglutination occurs when A positive is given to A negative. Not good. Hope this was insightful. If you have any other questions, I expect that you will bring those with your homework next class.